Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper. It is 7th April 2016. The first article is related to the data protection versus national security. So if you recollect our class, uh, the data protection, it is what is stressed by the multinational corporations. And countries such as India, where these companies are not incorporated, do not have any control over the data and communications which they possess. Here the word critical is called encryption, where a message between the sender and receiver is distorted so that it cannot be hampered or leaked in between. So, as of now, if you remember the iPhone case in the United States of America, where FBI has asked for a backdoor entry into the data of the iPhone to take an access. In this context, what is happening over here is, WhatsApp has announced an end-to-end -end encryption. It means um, nowhere between the sender and receiver, the access to the information can occur for a third party. That is going to be obviously a risk for the national security because it can be used for the terror elements towards their secretive communication. So in this context, um, if you remember with regard to the recent violence, say the uh, Patidar violence, Jat violence or Kapu violence in Andhra Pradesh, so, in different states, one common feature is people are using the social media to spread the message quick and fast. So, in this context, the government needs to have a reliable information from these social media databases. And also, in the JNU issue, so there is a Lashkar Taiba chief, his Twitter handle was, was revealed to be fake. And who exactly has handled this? There is no proper information with the government and Twitter did not respond till date. That's why the government is asking for these multinational corporations to establish Indian servers and to route the information through the Indian servers so that the government will have ready access to the real-time data. So again, the government is seeing the data from the national security perspective and the tech giants are seeing the data from the privacy of the citizens perspective. So these are the two articles. Now, open source software. Previously in UPSC, I think around 2006, there was a question that is copy left. It means an open source software which has been left for free use is called copy left. It is opposite to the copyright. A open source software means which is developed and placed in the public domain for further development, use or reuse for any practical purposes. So Ubuntu is a one such open source software based on Linux platform. Previously, Windows never believed in um, open source software uh, and it always was towards the proprietary software which is for commercial use. So it appears that Windows 10 version of the, uh, the window, uh, this Microsoft uh, is also moving towards a open source software. So more than that, the technical details are not necessary for us over here. Coming to the Forest Rights Act, understand there are some important rights which have been given to the forest dwellers, the traditional forest dwellers and scheduled tribes who are living on the forest for the three generations. What are they? The land use rights, community forest rights and then protection of the forest, rights for the protection of the forest. So land use rights to an extent are properly implemented. But community forest rights, uh, right to protect the forest, these are not being properly implemented. So with their right to protect the forest, um, with regard to the mining operations, the Grama Sabha has to give the necessary permissions. In this case, um, there are two tricks the things have been followed over here. One is, that particular area will be declared as an urban or semi-urban area. And so that it uh, moves out of the Panchayat extension to scheduled areas and also the Forest Rights Act. So, and the second thing is, um, the taking uh, forged signatures of the Grama Sabha saying that uh, the Grama Sabha has approved for the mining project um, and giving away that particular area for the mining contract to the multinational corporations or else to the Indian corporates. Um. So this system was more exploitative. In this context, what it can be said is this. So the Forest Rights Act is bypassed one or the other way by the state operators to provide for illegal mining activities in the country. So in this case, every year from the Forest Rights Act, 
panchayat extension to scheduled areas. So what are the rights and functions of the Grama Sabha? So always there is a question Try in prelims. Try to have a look over these two laws over in this context. India-Pakistan relationships. The essence of this article is repeated almost some 20 to 30 times in the Hindu, Express, Hindu and Indian Express. What they say is why India need to engage with Pakistan. If you see most of the Suhasini either articles on India-Pakistan relationship that is based on the essence of engagement. So here you need, you need to understand that the Pakistan has a deep state within the state that is Army of the Pakistan. So most of the shots have been called by army and as an institution it also enjoys the respect of the people. On the other hand, with regard to the India is con uh, Indian is concerned, the democracy is very sensible over here. On the other side, the politicians in Pakistan enjoy a huge disrespect and the people see the army as only an institution that can keep the people unified and the country intact. In this context, what India has to do, it has to deepen the democratic institutions in Pakistan. That's only through the engagement with Pakistan. And the second thing is, already at the National Security Advisor level, the talks are going on. So to engage them further, the talks can be initiated at the level of the army chiefs on both the sides too. And then the third level will be the political engagement. So this continuous engagement can provide for the new wave of cooperation between India and Pakistan. So either we like it or not, the entire Pakistan foreign policy is based on, is India centric and it is centered around the interests of the military, Pakistani military. Now, US for stronger ties with India. So in this case, recently at the National Security Summit, the President Obama has equated or hyphenated India with Pakistan and said the South Asia has to reduce their nuclear weapons which India has reacted that uh, this uh, lack of an understanding of India's defense posture. So that was the situation. So in this light of the things, um, the defense secretary Ash Carter is visiting India. So in this case, um, what he says is, already yesterday in his newspaper, if you recollect, um, India-US defense partnership, um, it is a defining partnership for the 21st century. So in this case, he mentions there are two pillars for the India and US cooperation. One is the US pivot for Asia merges with the India's act based policy. And the second thing is uh, the defense trade and technology initiative. These are, I mean, promotes the strong binding relationship between these two countries. And along with this, on the other side, US is expecting India to sign three different documents. One is um, a logistics uh, support agreement and then, sorry, logistics supply agreement, um, SISMOVA and uh, BACA that is related to the basic exchange and cooperation ex agreement. But however, Indian security establishment is very much opposed to this. Um, and two days back, if you see the Indian Express article, what it clearly says is it is going to limit um, the choices of India's foreign engagement or engagement with the other countries. The diplomatic choices are going to come down and they are narrowed down to the United States interests across the world. So in this context, our independence with regard to the foreign policy will be reduced to the choices made by the United States. So in this, the India is not very keen to sign these agreements. But however, the defense cooperation and India it became the largest buyer from the United States of America now. So these are increasing on to the right side. Coming to the China. Now this is not the first time, this is the second time China is actually talking about um, uh, not falling in line with the India's interests. You know that when uh, Prime Minister Modi visited China, there is a clear agreement that both the countries shall fight together against the terror. So in this case, there is no difference in the terror. That's what is both the chiefs have spoken about. So here, India has proposed in the United Nations to keep Mr. Masood Azhar's name, that is Jaish -e Mohammed's chief's name, along with the other notorious terror organizations such as Islamic State, Al Qaeda, etc. But China has opposed it to the move on the technical ground that it lacks sufficient information. So in this context, India has conveyed its displeasure at the highest levels to the Chinese government on this particular issue. The language of violence. 
So with regard to this article, let us understand what is the section 29, uh, 295 of the Indian Penal Code. So the section 295A, it talks about a deliberate and malicious act which is intended to create religious outrage between the people. So in this case, by hurting their religious sentiments, etc. But uh, if you see the Baba Ramdev's uh, comment of beheading the lakhs of people, uh, if not, they he do not have the respect for constitution or the rule of the law. So what it says is this. Uh, so it is trying to provide for an incitement to the violence. Um, so in this case, understand clearly, though the government distanced itself from this, uh, government can take the action by using the section 295A. So leaving these things aside, that's what is the article talks about. Understand clearly that um, certain people were considered as the role models and they have a strata in the society. In this context, any responsible statement by these people can incite the violence in the society. So an argument and uh, a reason-based debate that provides for a ground uh, or that provides for a sensibility in a democracy. So here, in India, the, today the culture is going in such a way that uh, the violence pays off. So the language of violence is increasing, which is not good for the democracy. So, coming to the Panama paper trial, here understand that there is a link in the Indian Express, which I have already posted on my Facebook. So if you can go through that link, you can clearly understand what is this about. Now, before 2004, there was, uh, I mean, the FEMA was in force in India. So it means that uh, no money can be carried forward or, uh, outside the boundaries. After 2014, uh, sorry, 2004, liberalized remittance scheme has come up um, under which um, Indians can, up to the I mean, $25,000, um, they can uh, keep it in the offshore or else they can use it for medical treatment education for any purpose they intended to but can they invest in the companies outside the law or these rules are not very clear about them so in 2013 the rbi has allowed for the investments in the joint venture subsidiaries etc in the offshore companies so in this case the lack of proper guidelines and rules these are the technical loopholes created um, is providing an access to the tax havens for the uh, people. So in this case, if you remember the President Barack Obama's uh, views, um, so most of the money stocked in the tax havens is legal. That is the major problem. So we have to address uh, these legal loopholes in the global capital movement. And coming to act now, it is about MG Narega. So you know that M.G. Narega is more becoming a protection during the times of distress. So from 1980s till date, if you observe that, the agricultural growth has dramatically fallen whenever there is an El Nino. But however, in the previous cases, there is a there is simultaneous rise in prices which has compensated for the farmers. But now, because of global weak demand, the rise in prices is also not happening. So in this context, what we can say is this, India has to move uh, towards um, uh, as proper social security to the people. And MG Narega one way is becoming that social security. So what we can say is, um, the government with the delayed payments um, and central government with delayed dispersal of the funds to the states, uh, it is making this program ineffective, the only way for the distressed farmers. Um. But on the other hand, India also has come with new solutions whenever there is a distress on the rural side. So in 1960s, it took the form of uh, bringing in high-yielding varieties. In 1970s, in response to drought in Maharashtra, the near rural employment guarantee has come into existence. Later, at the national level, it has become MG Narega. So now, the need of the hour in the ch climate change era is more and more related to the providing for water efficiency use. We need to talk about this water efficiency use. And the next, this Shamsarin's article on nuclear point. Remember one statement is, there is no nuclear security as long as nuclear weapons exist. Now, United States of America has requested the countries for reduce of the dependence on nuclear weapons. 
but if you see there is some hollowness in this um, where it has been said that um, the Pentagon repeat, uh, reportedly plans to spend um, more than uh, a trillion plus dollars over the 30 years with regard to the uh, I mean refurbishing of its nuclear weapons and also recently the President Obama has ordered for the deployment of uh, more number 200 plus weapons uh, nuclear weapons in Europe uh, to counter the Russia's influence after the Ukrainian crisis. So in one way whatever has been said and whatever has been implemented there is always a difference. So this is about today's newspaper. Let us discuss the yesterday's question that is India Saudi Arabia relations are taking a new turn in the changing global environment. So in this case what are the points we need to uh, touch? One is Iran nuclear deal and after its impact, global fall in uh, commodity prices and the third thing is growth of Islamic State and threat to the, the, globe, the so monarchies in the West Asia and after this the Pakistan dimension to these articles so and added to that Yemen and Arab Spring how the instability is growing on with regard to the Syria war we can write one point so total it will come down to six to seven points and then we can make a conclusion that India's policy how it is changing with regard to the Saudi Arabia situation now. So in the uh, uh, Indian's perspective what are the three dimensions as given by Raja Mohan that is economic growth and the second is uh, energy security and also counter terror cooperation and uh, finally the defense and uh, strategic cooperation these are the three fundamental axes uh, the India and Saudi Arabia's engagement is deepening. So you can say these three axes and you can close the answer. So this is about the answer. Thank you very much. All the best.